Hello. <clears throat> Hello everyone. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you're watching from. So I don't know if I can see when people have joined, but I just want to try to keep the time. Welcome to this live session. Um, I'm just going to wait some few seconds before I start. Okay, I've seen someone else has already joined us. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. You can drop a comment just for me to know that you are here with me. I'll soon start because I don't want to waste your time and I don't want this session to be a long one. Happy Easter celebration to all the Christians out there and to the Muslims as well. Happy um what now they call it, but happy, happy fasting. Uh, welcome, welcome. I'm so glad to have you. I'm so glad to have you join. I'm so glad to have you spare your time to join me. It's a weekend here in France. No, it's a, it's a holiday in France. So I'm actually at home. And I have, I'm sitting in front of my window. So I have this light reflection on my face and it's making me glow. So, <laughs> and I've been resting very well. I had a nice weekend. I hope you had a nice weekend as well. Because mine was lovely. I ate a lot. So yeah. It's a wonderful celebration for me. Okay, so I'm going to be starting soon. Um, yeah, good to have you, Stella. Good to have you, Joy. Good to have you, 2K. Thank you for joining. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to start. So the purpose of this um, live session was just to give you updates about studying in France in 2024 and just to answer as well the frequently asked questions. I sent um, um, a kind of... Um, um, a document that you can you could add ask um, add your questions. So I have that document that I used to collect like the questions that I made. I used to make the slide that I'm going to share with you, and just to share some other things that I felt might be useful for you. Like you know, for the rest of the year, we are still we are just starting April, so you have like eight months to come. So yeah, considering you're studying abroad or studying in France specifically. So um, I'm going to start the slide share right now. So uh I don't know I don't know what it's not showing it's supposed to be showing. Okay, I don't know what's happening. Okay, just give me some seconds. Um sorry about that. Okay, so I have the slide here. It's actually supposed to be like a video, but I don't know why it's not coming up. So the better one. Okay, uh, let me see. Technology. <laughs> okay, sorry guys, just uh, give me some seconds, please. <clears throat> so like I said, it's going to be, yeah, it's we are up now. So it's just basically just to give you some updates, you know, about studying in France in 2024. So first of all, I'd like to introduce myself for those of you that see my face for the first time. My name is Nsongura Willy. My first name is actually Nsongura. Willy is actually my son name. So, but no, because Willy is kind of easier. So most persons just call me Willy, but my name is actually Nsongura. So that's my name, Nsongura. It means precious or expensive or costly anyways, but I prefer precious. But if you can pronounce Nsongura, no problem. If you can't, Willy is okay with me. But Nsongura is actually my name. And I'm actually working here in Paris, in France. And I'm actually studying as well. I, I explained that in one of my videos when I was like celebrating like over 2,000 subscribers. So I actually like explained all those things and what I'm doing um, already. So I'm actually working and studying, but I'm more of working. Um, my study is just like for 14 weeks. It's called an alternance program. But for me, it's not for just a master's. It's called a master's specialization in France. It's like a back plus six, but we're not going to explain that. So I'm just giving you a little introduction. I studied industrial chemistry in my bachelor's and in my master's, I studied sustainable industrial engineering. So for those of you asking questions about changing courses, it's actually possible. And right now I'm working um, as a project manager um, for a beauty company. And um, my, for my specialized program or my executive master's, I'm doing um, a supply chain program. So that's a field I'm really interested in. So moving forward, um, just to celebrate some few milestones, thanks to all of you that have been subscribing and watching my videos, you have encouraged me. Okay, right now we are over 2,200 subscribers. And thanks to your encouragement, I've been able to upload over 80 videos. 
<laughs> although it includes like shots and so on and the live ones so but thanks very much and we have now over eighty-five thousand views so you know you have to celebrate all these achievements and it didn't have been possible without you without you watching my videos without you taking your time to see my videos so thank you very much i really do appreciate it and some other milestones you have been able to achieve so i, I mentioned in my videos sometimes that i do like um this one-on-one -on -one sessions because i realized honestly with my schedule right now, I can't be answering everyone's question on Instagram or LinkedIn. Like, it's for me, I, when I want to answer your questions, I would like to really take out time to really, like, you know, be specific to your questions as it concerns you. So, I brought up a 30 minute session, a one on one that really allows you to ask me whatsoever thing you want to ask me. Like, you want to ask me about your life, concerning coming to France, concerning your academic paths, concerning even when you have like confessions about your study course, like, you're just free to ask me during this one-on-one -on -one session so i made it i made a 30 minute session for this and so far we have been able to have i've been able to have over 50 one-on-one -on -one sessions like the ones i could record though because i couldn't record everyone i couldn't like keep tabs of er on everyone i've had so before i started it as a free service like just free 30 minute session but it was actually abused because some persons they schedule it and for me, I'm only free on weekends, and weekends I'm supposed to be resting, but I decided to spend that time to you know, have the sessions. And then when I came, these people did not honor the invitation, did not honor like the schedule, and it was really heartbreaking. <laughs> so I realized that maybe you know there has they have to be a price tag on it maybe for people to know that it's valuable, like it's my time and it's value that I'm adding. So it started becoming a paid session, but I, I still made it to be narrow because of course I understand it's not easy, especially I know most of my subscribers are Nigerians. So I have I have to make things easier for Nigerians so it's um the feed in, in Naira so to make it easier and since you have had over 50 persons and then I also have like a full consultations before that allows me to guide you like in your full application like in selecting like schools to apply to and then to making sure that the application is being sent that includes like looking at your cv your cover letter and all those things so i did that but i'm putting it in red right now as of april because i'm going to put a hold on it i just need to really like structure it very well so that you know just to give it a structure for um so that we, the both parties we are clear on what's happening and I've seen that I've invested like over 55 hours since I started this one-on-one -on -one session and consultation sessions like the whole 55 hours <laughs> you know that I've done for my life <laughs> but I'm happy honestly I'm happy because like the feedbacks from the feedbacks I've had I've been able to have like over 20 25 feedbacks so far and it have all been positive so it's just really encouraging to know that it's helpful to some persons this one-on-one -on -one session it has been able to clear people's doubts so I'm really happy you know I'm really happy and based on survey if out of 50 persons I'm able to have 25 feedbacks it's, it's already a good one <laughs> So, um, moving on to the next one, I have here, I have here some of the feedbacks, I don't know if you can see, but yeah, I have here some of the feedbacks, I just thought I should share, you know, um, feedback some persons gave me after the session, that it was insightful, it really helped them, it cleared their doubts, and was able to give them clarity on what they should do next, so yeah, um, that was helpful. And so these are just some of the feedbacks, I can't put everything here, but I just thought I should share some with you personally new people you can always post it and read if you want to read the feedbacks anyways so coming to the main thing which is the q and a session so i tried to i had like a lot of different questions like people asked me a lot of different things but so i tried to like collate them and give them like a topic so that i don't have to read read out all the questions i don't have to like read out all these each stories that i have them so there's there's some questions on visa like on proof of funds like how much people should use for their proof of funds or if they have blocked accounts so by the side i tried to put some videos because some of these things i've already mentioned it in some videos so i put on the side some videos that you can check that can really explain to you because in the videos i put links we gave examples we shared screen and all those things that could really help you and as well for you to learn from other persons that have done the same thing as you before. So just to answer this question, for the proof of funds, honestly, it's Campus France that will normally give you the documents that we use for the proof of funds because how you want to sponsor yourself will not be the same way like the other person wants to sponsor themselves. But normally Campus France will provide you like if you um you are going to need a sponsor, they provide you with like a sponsor document that your sponsor has to fill. They tell you that your sponsor has to give a letter 
everything that is needed. And you know, based on the exchange rate, it might not always be the same. So like campus France will be the best person, like the best source of information. If you watch this video on the France study visa, I know we shared like the screen with the PDA that that was as of 2021, the PDF we used, if I'm not wrong, or 2022. We showed a PDF that um, Campus France shared with him, which he used to prepare for his visa procedure. So if I, I were you, just to have an idea on what you should expect, you can watch the video. And when you reach that place, we share the screen. You just like post it. And then you see the do different documents that you would need. In, you get what I'm saying? But for now, like you don't really need to worry about the visa as of now, like if you have not even got to admission, because you have to apply for the visa when it's like three months to your resumption date. So just so you know. So the first thing is not to worry about the visa first. And as of the block account, um, France, they do not need blocked account, just to re-emphasize that point. They don't need blocked accounts in France. So you don't need blocked accounts, just so you know. And before there was this um um talks around that there, there's going to be like a deposit that you have to pay and i made it clear in this video that that has been removed it was just um a proposal like from the bill but it was not um implemented it has not been implemented and it has actually been withdrawn so international students will not need to pay any deposit fee before they can come to france you can also watch this self-funded video that a friend of mine shared about his journey coming to france to study as well so that's it on this topic, similar to proof of funds and blocked accounts. So going to the next question that we have here. Uh, so we have something as well on like the application, the fall index, scholarships, and so on. So first of all, in France, the majority of the start dates in France are always in September. Most of the schools that are in September, they don't really have like at UK that they have most schools, major major schools that they have like different intakes. In France, majority of the schools are always September intake. But there are other ones that you could see that they have like um during the spring, January, and so on. But mostly in France, it's always it's always September intake. So just so you know, and you can still apply. Some schools are still ongoing. We are going to see it. We see how some schools are still ongoing. They still have the applications for that. And then for scholarships, yes, France they have scholarships for international students. Most scholarships in France for international students, the ones that pertain to the school, I have listed some in this video. They normally have it like around. Let's say from September to like December for some of them, depending on which one, or September to October. So depending on which one. So what I would advise you to do now, if you're interested in like applying for scholarships, you should try to find them out. I've listed them in some of the videos. So try to find them out. Check out like as of last year, what was the timeline of that scholarship? With that, you have in mind what could be the possible timeline for the one in 2024. You understand? So with that, you can prepare very well for for the next um, session or for the next season of the scholarship application. But from what I've seen, it's always from September to October or it extends just till January, but majorly it's always till like the end, December. So just be clear on the one you, you are aiming for or the ones you're aiming for and prepare towards it. So that's the one for internally. Then, but for if the ones for external bodies, like for Nigerians that have um, PTDF, it's a different one. It's always around um, February, March. And then even for Total Energy, that's the one I benefited from that has just reopened. It's always um, around February, March as well. So, but for the ones in France, it's always like in the previous year, you understand? I don't know if that's clear. So um, the next question we have here, okay, I put I put like next step. So for a person that's still looking for schools, like I said, there's still some schools that are still ongoing, or you don't need to apply through Campus France for these ones. They needed to apply directly through them. So majorly, you still have business schools that are still open right now for application business schools. But just have in mind that business schools are expensive. So you have most of them that are going to start from maybe from over 10K. So maybe you see some other schools that will be like for the two years, they'll be like 18K for the two years. So note, always note if it's like a one year fee or it's like for the whole program, you understand? So when you're checking, you have to be clear on that. What does the school fees up? like cover so you, like you're not scared that's what i'm trying to clear so if it's like they say 18k for like two years you should know okay that means the first is 9k and the second is 9k and that most schools they allow you to pay in installment in most schools they allow you to pay installment you don't have to like clear everything and then majority of the schools they allow you to pay when you arrive but when it comes to business schools from what i've observed i think for the business schools they prefer you pay a part before you come they always mention okay after you're giving admission that means you don't have to pay before they give you admission, like before you pay, that means you're sure of your admission. So they'll say, okay, 
to be sure of the administrative process or before you come into the administrative process, you have to pay some parts of the school fees. That's for most private schools and business schools. That's from my observation from the research I've been making. But if for like the public schools, they normally allow you to arrive in France, like the school I went to, it's until you arrive in France before you start the payment and you can pay like three installments. So let's say it's 5,000. So you pay like in 1,000 something, 1,000 something in three installments. So these are some of the few schools that I, I saw that the applications are still ongoing. That's still a lot more. It's just for you to take out your time and search for them. Honestly, I believe that's still a lot more. And it might depend on your program because it's not the school that will offer the programs that you want. So for the, like, for example, Investe Paris Sacre, I made a video on it. Um, it's one of those, my, I think like 29 schools that are 243 or so. So you can check it out. I know the application is still ongoing, depending on the course, that's still ongoing. Okay, so let's look at the next question. Um, so the next one we have here, it's on Campus France application procedure. <sighs> Excuse me. So I actually have a plan to like make a presentation where I kind of explain like the different Campus France procedures. Like if you apply to Campus France, so what's the next day for you? If you don't apply to Campus France, what's the next day for you? I'm going to make a separate video on that, but just to answer you and for the sake of this session that we have. So normally um, in the Campus France, procedure if you're applying to campus france you know like the schools you need to apply to campus france normally after the application it's over like december 15 for nigerians it's different from for other countries so you go for the interview with campus france which is always like from january to march i'm just saying using nigeria as an example other countries they have their own different timeline so after the interview the schools they get back to you they upload it on your portal if you're rejected or you're accepted you're going to see it there or the ones that they need to send the direct application, like link to you, they'll, they'll get back to you. I've received feedback from some persons that have re received their feedbacks already. And the ones that is done, after you've gotten your admission, you don't need to like do any big thing again, because you know, in, on campus France, you can either choose, um, I don't have admission, I want to apply, or I already have admission. So if you're choosing, I want to apply, this is the procedure I'm explaining, just so you, you are clear. So after you've gotten admission now, the next step is your visa process, which, is still going to be with campus france because they're the ones that's if you're if you're in a country that discovered by campus france so just just have this in mind so that the ones that are not going to like check your documents after you feel like your long stay visa and everything like the form online so they check that all your documents are complete that you feel the right thing they have the rights you know the right document and so you first of all have a session with them where they're going to give you what they call like a convention d'entretien that shows that you have had an interview with them or that you're passing through them and before you now book your um visa dates with the visa office so that's the one like the whole application process with campus france but if your school they don't need you to apply to campus france so you don't actually you're not constrained by the timeline or by the time frame of campus france you register with your school you get your admission and then you go to campus france website you choose, I already have an admission, and then you create your account and do ask you to upload like the admission letter and all those kind of stuff, all those kind of procedure. And immediately you are done with that. They validate your documents and then they invite you for interview to see like your papers, for your visa, and then they still give that convention don't don't retain that shows that you have passing through them and then you go for your visa process. I don't know if that's clear. So so after you have gotten your admission, you don't need to pay somebody to book and um an appointment with campus friends you don't need an external person to help you with that you can actually do it yourself but normally campus friends they charge you a fee which is non-refundable in nigeria it's like fifty thousand naira but in other countries based on your currency but i know they'll charge you a fee for that but you don't need somebody else to do that for you like you don't need to go through you don't need to pay somebody before you go to campus friends i think you get my point you just like go to campus friends straight and then you pay to them and you know they take all the process from there so that's that's it for the campus France procedure. I hope that's clear. I'll try to make a video just to, to have like a diagram that's like explaining this different procedure because it's it's quite confusing for some persons. But before you try to explain this in some of my videos, so if you could just watch some of these videos, I recommended. I really like shared my screen. I explained it process by process requirements. So please check out these videos and just, just take out time and watch them. They're going to really answer your questions, please. But I'll still go the extra mile and make another video, okay? Okay, so the next question we have here, um, okay, let me see. It's about um, schools without IELTS or Duolingo requirements. So um, there are a lot of schools in France that don't need you to submit this. From what I've observed during this period, I saw that those um, I, 
IAE school, that's the schools of management. It's not necessarily business school, they call them schools of management, IAE, it's different, Leon, Grenoble, and so on. So then they'll ask you for what they call like a sim, um, like a sim something, a sim score or something. Some of them is not compulsory, but for some other schools are compulsory. So that's another one for the business, like management schools. Green of did not ask that, at least I did not see that. Then for the IELTS, in most schools, they could say, oh, you need to submit IELTS or TOEFL and all those kind of things. But there's always another line, <laughs> if you are reading very well, they'll say, if you're coming from an English um, speaking country, this is not a mandatory requirement for you. Some of them, most of them, they write out that. So they always say they'll confirm it with your identity card that you're coming from an English speaking country. So you not be, they will not make it mandatory for you to um to submit this, to submit this requirement. So um that's just not that it's not always um, mandatory. But if in some of them they make that field a mandatory field, like you cannot skip it, because I've seen it, they, they make it mandatory. You have to you have to upload something. So for me, I can add I'll advise you either you submit like your transcript or like your YA, like because I'm using an Indian example, sorry. Any tran anything that shows that you did English language, you understand. Or you submit like an English language um, profi um proficiency um letter from your school. I I got that from my school. You can just go to your school to give you a letter that um states that throughout your four years or three years of studies, you have been taught in English. You have done everything. You wrote your exams, your courses, everything is in English. I can upload it on that because like from for some schools they mention it's not compulsory for English speakers, but they still make that field mandatory that you can't skip it. So. You can upload these documents there and you know, they'll, they'll take care of it because they've already mentioned it's not mandatory for you. If it, in some they say it's mandatory, you can actually skip them <laughs> because a lot of other schools, they don't make it mandatory. Honestly, like this is France, we speak English more than them. Okay, don't worry. But anyways, <laughs> so you can actually like, you find a lot of other schools that don't make it compulsory. Honestly, I don't feel you should stress yourself about it. For me, when I was applying for school, even this class asked, asked me to, submit so IELTS, like I just skip it. Like it's not only you now, the other schools are very so <laughs> anyway. So let's go to another one. I hope that answers your question, anyways, on that. Um so yeah, another question on change of course of study for masters. You no, know, I use myself for an example. I was given an introduction. I mentioned that I studied industrial chemistry for my bachelor's, but then for my masters, I did industrial engineering <laughs> so it's totally different so it's very possible for you to do it you can watch these two videos because they share their story they shared how they prepare for it you understand it's not like you just come from a totally different and just move without having without showing because in your motivation letter you should be able to show why like why am i changing the field what makes me what why should i be considered what, what makes me a stable candidate you understand so you should be able to express in your cover letter or your motivation letter that Despite the fact that you're coming from field A, you still have what it takes to succeed in field B or why you want to change to field B. What's your motivation? So you should be able to make that clear without anybody asking you, you understand? So I would say it's a possibility for this to happen. But of course, it's not like it's a guarantee that you're going to get it because there is always competition in when you're applying to schools. Like I said, they have like quotas they want to take. Then they have that like people that are you know, maybe, maybe have better grades and better experiences, but it's a possibility. Don't limit yourself. That's why you should apply to as many schools as possible, you know? Don't say no. <laughs> okay, so um, let's go to the next question. Um, okay, so the next one is actually on finding master's program or some of the same English thoughts programs and so on. And I think one particular person specifically like gave me a detail of the school that he wanted to apply and he was looking for. So I, I, I took this as an example. He was looking for a course in software development. I don't know who that person is, but I hope you're watching this video because I did not take note of the names. So um, normally when I'm searching for schools, you can use Campus France to search, search for, for schools, but it could be limited. So you have like the study portals masters, and I saw that a lot of you, you have an idea on it, on how to like, you know, the, the portal, but there's a better way of using it because the study portals or the master portal is not like an official school website, you get. It's just like a portal that collects all the different master's program, just makes it easier for you to find them and at least know the name of the program, know the school. So when going on master's portal and you find your program, what you should do is copy the name of your program and the school and just paste it on another tab, or another, you know, another search tab, and then it leads you directly to the school that was mentioned for that program. And on that school, you can now see the main procedure, like the application timeline, like the requirements, 
like how to go about it based on are you EU, non-EU, or wh wherever you are coming from? So that's you know that's how to better utilize it. But use these two use these two platforms that are going to really like that reach in helping you find. And I even saw they have a one for bachelors also, like study study portals for bachelors. They have it too. So that's actually where I like get my resources from. But I I go I go a step further by going to the official school website to really show that the information that is correct, that I'm getting the right information. So for that person, yeah, you can still find some programs in this school, like related to this IT. If someone's out here looking for things in tech, you can see these different schools. There are many others. So just, just use this site and I'm sure you, you're going to find a lot of other resources. Okay, so the next question, I think we are soon coming to an end with the question before I look at the comments. So um, so schools um, with or without campus friends and location, honestly, I've already made a video on that. We I listed some schools um like with low tuition and some courses with low tuition and like that master master pot is still another this thing. So you can still I, th I feel like this is going to like answer that question. And so just so you know, um, because I I, I got this um impression from somebody when I was having a meeting. So just because like these schools are 243 doesn't mean that the whole of schools in France are 243. No. <laughs> you see, I have schools in France that are like 20K. Like my executive masters I'm doing is exactly 20K. So you see, I have schools in France that are more and more expensive. Just that these programs, they are still maintaining the price for the national fees. They're not like having differentiated school fees. So that's what you should know. So just because you don't find your program that is 243 doesn't mean that it's a lie. It's not a lie that programs like that, that, that 243, just that yours or the one you like did not fall within that range so um but the other program that low tuition i mean if you want to compare it like you know in the overall like the quality of education the long term um benefit i've been a student in france then the teaching is actually like low because you still find schools at that like three thousand seven seventy four thousand five thousand six thousand seven thousand so and since you're allowed to pay in installment i I think it's doable, but of course, it depends on your situation. You know yourself. I, I won't know. I, I won't be to decide for you. That's why when some persons ask me, oh, I'm looking for low tuition. I'm like, what is low tuition based on you? <laughs> because there's some persons that are able to afford like 15K and that's not an issue or they're able to afford 10K. So it just, it's really variable. So it depends on your pocket. And let me see if I have another question or that's all on based on the things I collected from the question I was asked. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the questions that I was asked that's from the documents I made. So I'm going to check from your comment to see if there's any question I can ask. But before I go there, so recently I shared um, the one on the a video on the total energy scholarship and I was getting some questions. I don't know if I, I don't know if I not really explain it today. So based on my experience, what happened during when I applied, um, they, they they have a specific list of schools or list of courses, not just schools, list of courses that they sponsor, Total Energies, NMPC Total Scholarship, this is what I'm referring to. So on the video I made, on the description, I put a link that you can see the list of courses that they sponsor. Based on my knowledge as of 2022, I don't know if it's going to be different. It's not all the schools. They don't sponsor it to all the schools or all the courses. So you have to go and check if what you like is amongst those courses it's not like ptdf that they have like a lot of options a lot of schools that they sponsor uk germany and so on no, it's not it's not the same it's specifically to france and they have like specific courses and not just schools, specific courses in that school that they sponsor so please check out that link in the description to find those courses what other question did i get you have to apply to the schools yourself they're not the ones that are applying to the schools for you it's your job it's your duty to apply to the school yourself you're not going to wait for them. So while you're applying to scholarship, because the scholarship application is actually very simple. Like it's so you don't even take like a lot of minutes to apply. It's your responsibility to apply to the school and follow it up. They're not responsible for that. So yeah, just so you know. I think it's the same thing as PTDA for any other scholarship, most scholarships, at least I know of. It's your responsibility that, that you apply to the school. So even in Commonwealth training, you are always responsible to apply to the school and not the, the scholarship body applying to it for you. I think that's it on that. I hope I've answered that question. So I'm going to just read the comments to see if there are other questions that I need to respond to. Okay, so I'm going to read the comment. Please, please, blocking for Okay, I've already answered this. Um, I need this. 
I need this one on one. Yeah, the one on one session. Just check the about tab on my channel. You're going to see the link to book the one on one session. Please note it's a paid session, just so you know. Uh, okay. Um, thank you. Thank you to uh, what other thing? They have age bracket for bachelor altruism. I mean, if the school they told you they have age bracket, then it's a school like. Like I said, I'm not working for any school. I wasted that. For me, I'm just sharing based on my experience and based on my research. So in the school, they specifically told you that they have age bracket, then you should take the schools to work for it. I'm I'm not I'm not working for the school. Is it possible to be rejected after, after receiving admission letter from a school in France? <laughs> um this, if I understand very well, you're saying is it possible for the school to reject you after they're giving you admission letter? I think it's possible because I've, I've had a friend of mine that this happened to, but I don't know why, because he actually got admission from the school and they, then they sent him like, oh, it was a mistake. I don't know if there's any how you can follow up on that, like legally, I don't know. But yeah, I, I've seen that happen before. But I know it's not. it doesn't take long for them to come back to you. Maybe it's like within like a very short frame of time. So I've seen that happen before to somebody. Um, please, based on your experience, which school in France is with the highest acceptance rate? That's that's a difficult question. When I was searching like schools in France that have highest acceptance rate, I was just seeing like say um university if an an English um American university that is in Paris. I know even bother checking because I know it's going to be very high. If I want to answer this question generally, I'm going to say that business schools <laughs> that are expensive they're going to have high acceptance rates. I'm saying business schools because most business schools they know that persons come in that most likely they might not have like um all the experiences, the background, everything that relates to that course. You understand? So they could be more lenient in their um, actually I put it they could be more lenient in their selection process. I'm not saying this is what happens, but I'm just giving you, but like you say, based on my experience, it's not based on statistics. So, but I know that most um, universities when you see in France, I, the acceptance rate is always on the low side from what I see. Because like I said, they have like limited quarters and maybe that's because their school fees is not so so high. But um, you should always keep your options open and not just like focus on the 243 schools. Please don't just focus on those 243 schools, especially like if you're having like, if your degree or your score is like a 2-2, I'll just give you an example, a 2-2 and then maybe it's a third class and you didn't even have like relevant experiences that are related to that. Or maybe like you finished school like very long time ago. I didn't, I didn't get what I'm saying. Just try and keep your options open and not just limit yourself. From what I've observed and my experience so far, I've seen that if you are someone that, um, let's say like you're in your late 30s, and that means you finished school like since 30, since like 2009 or like the early 2000s, for example. And then you have like over 10 years of experience. It shouldn't just focus on the 243 schools, honestly, like, honestly, because they always put there that people that have professional experience are going to maybe give differentiated fee, differentiated fees, you understand? So please try and, like, spread your options and not just focus on those schools. Okay, so the next question I'm seeing here, I'm just reading from the chat, sorry. Is the one on one session just a one thing? Uh, can I still ask questions after that? Okay, so I've got gotten this question a lot. Yeah. Excuse me. So the 30 minute session is a one on one, it's a one time thing. Like it's a one time thing because that's when I have the opportunity. Like I'm kind of obligated <laughs> to give you a space in my time. So I'm going to answer your questions, but after that, I can't like promise you my attention. But if you are you're able, like I've had people that had the one on one session and later on they had like a just straightforward question that asked, Oh, should I use A or should I use B? that it didn't take my time i can just say a or yes or no but if it's like you're going you want more detail detail something i might not be able to or even if i answer you i might not answer you like urgent it might be i'll take my time to answer you like when i'm free and it's not like i'm doing purposely just it's not a priority for me so it's a one-time thing but you're still free to ask me any other question but just know that i'm not obligated to respond to you especially if it's going to be something that would take my time or require me to like explain a lot Oh, uh, thanks a lot for that. Please, can you outline the public universities in France that are still applying? So, like, I already, I already highlighted some of the universities that are still applying, are still accepting applications. Some of them, and I've already shared resources where you can find more. So, if you're just joining the live, you can just rewind, go back, and look at it. I think I've answered that one. Um, so another one. I think this is the last one. If there are no other ones, 
Um, when they told your friend that mission was a mistake, did the letter respond to him or her positively? Or did the letter no they gave him like they gave him an admission, so that means it was um a negative one, and they now respond and said, Oh, sorry, it was a mistake. It was it's not an admission, like you're not admitted. So I don't really go deep into it to really ask because I mean it's a it's a, it's a sad thing. So I don't really start asking about the details, what did they say, everything. I just I think and I know the school and I know that the school is a very high, like high ranking school and it's really a very high competition. So I just like told him, okay, yeah, it's not because of you, <laughs> it's not your fault, honestly. But I, I did not follow it up. I don't really follow it up. Oh uh, I don't I don't understand this question. Do you know about a master's program. I don't understand this question, Stella. I don't understand this question, what you're asking. So I'll, I'll be unable to answer you because I don't understand what you mean. So this next question I'm seeing is, I was sent an email by university that I have an interview with them. Can you tell me the type of questions I should pray for? So I actually made a video on interview questions. So please kindly check out that. Like I won't be able to like answer it because I've already made a video on it, on interview questions. Please check it out on how to ace your interview. So these are kind of questions that are going to ask you. If you're able to prepare, while you're making your research, you're going to, you know, other things will keep popping up. So kind of watch that video and it's going to give you instant the kind of questions you should, you are going to receive and how to answer them. Um, I don't know what is A. I don't know what is A. I don't know, I don't know that, still. I'm so sorry. I don't understand A-I-R-E. -I, -E. I don't know that. Um, I don't know that. Um, so I don't know if I've answered everything. I think that's that's all the questions. That's all the questions. That's all the questions. Mm. Okay. If um there are no other questions, I'll have to end it. But I hope that the session was clear. I was able to explain like the next steps you should consider depending on whatsoever um options you are taking. So I'll try to you not know, keep bringing more useful videos for you people. I just think there's only one type of long stay visa, especially if it's like students. I don't know if there are different types of long stay visas, but on their portal, at least from what I know from when I was applying to just only one type of long stay visa, which is like for three months. And normally when you come to France, you validate your visa, you validate it, you pay like 50 euros or so to validate, I don't know if that's increased, but into just 50 years to validate the master, to validate your long stay visa. But like I mentioned, campus friends are the ones that are going to guide you on that, if there are any changes that they want to guide you. I've already answered these questions, um, um, Stella, on the public university, on some schools. And I've showed you, I, I, I can't know, cause I don't have like the list, the list of the different timelines of all the schools, you understand? I, and I just know that most majority of the public schools that are closed because they are linked to campus funds. But for something that are still open, it's like that Paris Saclay, I think Université Paris Cité is still open. But use that um, master's portal, search based on the courses you are looking for, and from there you'll be able to know which ones are still open. But I won't be able to like know, um, know all of them often. Yeah, even if I was to have this thing, it's going to be like in the documents. The tuition fee in Grenoble University is like 3,770. 3, That's the tuition fee in like the UGR. But when it's like in the engineering institutes, it's higher in the engineering institutes. Like it's like 5,000 in the engineering institutes. Okay. Which other one? Uh, no, I don't know anything about um, arts on Metia. I don't know anything about that. Joy, Joy, I answered your question. I said it's, I answered it in the presentation, Joy. <laughs> I answered the one about um, the vlog, fonts blog. I said it's, it's a no. I made it in the presentation. It was there. So if you want more detail, just try and rewind and you see. No, there's nothing like a blog font. There is nothing like that. There is nothing like that. I've made a video on that. I hope I've answered your question, Joy. I hope you're happy now. <laughs> okay. Mm. Is there any dental university? Yeah, possibly they could be. I, I, I wouldn't know. Just use the master portals and search on it, please. But I think they show that. I'm not, I'm not certain, but use the master's portal to answer that. It's okay. I had answered your question. Um, I need one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, I said check my bio and you can book it. You can book the session, a one-on-one -on -one session. So I answered that question already. 
I have an issue. My passport expires in November. I'm Nigerian, but the country I am in now don't have a Nigerian embassy. I just finished my M1. No, 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 no. Okay. I don't, I don't know how I'm going to answer that question about a Nigerian passport. Even a Nigerian passport. I mean, is there any other, like, um, a country that you can go to check out? Or maybe, probably, you can send an email to, like, the Nigerian passport office. You know, normally, it's always online. You can... You can ask them. I think they'll be the best person to answer. Because I don't know anything about renewing your Nigerian passport in a country that have Nigerian embassy. I really don't have any idea on that. Hmm. What do you say? Can I use if you answer? I've already answered that question. Sorry, watch the video. I read there are some that you cannot renew. I don't valid. There are some. Then that's why you need to go to Campus France. Um, Queen it. Go to Campus France, please. Go to, like. Campus Fund is going to be the best person to answer you about all the rules and regulations on visa. Please ask them on the visa process. Or you can email the visa office. Because, like, if I give you anything now on the visa, it, it might be wrong because I'm not a visa person. Like, I'm not a visa personnel. Like, when I was applying for a visa, guys, like, it was chill. Like, it took me there in a short, so I was just, you know, chilling. <laughs> so I won't be able to give you anything. Anything I'm going to answer, I, I need to research. I need to research on that. I need to go, just go to the official body to research on that if I need to answer you. If I get a mission in Grenoble, I might to pay the No, in Grenoble, what I know is always until you arrive in the school. That's when you pay for it. Okay. Oh my God. I've answered this. I've, I've answered this already. Sorry. I've said Master's Portal Campus France. You can use that. I've answered this already. Um, I wouldn't say, like, they're not like specific schools that say they only accept HND or they only accept ND. I just know that. Majority of schools they do accept it. Can you can you watch the video on the HND um programs? My friend that did HND, maybe you can give you more ideas. But I know that schools don't specifically write out we are accepting HND. You know, it's based on like your credit load. If it matches, you know, they normally they write like the ECT credit load and so on. But another thing you can do just for you to be sure, if you see a program that you like, first of all, and in the school that you like, and you want to be sure that it's what's investing your time to apply to start the application process, advice is send the school an email. With your credential, this is what I have. Is this um, possible for me to apply for this program with this my qualifications or with this my transcript, you know? That's going to be a better option for you to do before you invest your time. Um, for the Grenoble University, I know that in most of the Grenoble University, yeah, they do, they do offer the exemptions. So it's always when you arrive, that's when you can apply for it and most of the chance, most of the time, you have higher chances of getting it in the UGR or in the IAE schools. There's higher percentage of you getting a school visit, um, exemption. But I can't tell you if you are going to get it, but it's a possibility. That, I think that's the way to answer the question, the possibility of getting the school fees um, exemption. Yeah, of course, Grenoble School is, is competitive because, like, yeah, it's a, it's a high-ranking school, so it's competitive as well. All right. So, um, okay. I don't want this video to exceed 45 minutes, so I'm going to end when it's 45 minutes. I'll be for 45 minutes, so. Um, so I have another question here. After the university interview, how long does it take to get admission? Honestly, it depends on the school, honestly. For Grand Noble, I know after the interview, they said you have to wait till the next jury. They see the next jury. So some other schools, they answer you immediately. Like, they don't waste time. Some, they answer you in, like, two weeks' time. So let's just say a frame of two weeks after the interview or less. But it all depends on the school. I can't give you an exact um an exact answer. If you want to know, you can always email the school and like, or maybe during your in fact, during your interview process, when they said you have questions for me, it should be one of the questions you ask, like, okay, so when am I getting back from you people? Like, when am I knowing what's the next step? You know, ask them, don't be scared of asking the question. You should you should always ask and ask the question after, you know, after your interview. Ask them when you should when you should expect the feedback. Hmm. If you don't have a specific response, then you can just go ahead and apply because so far as the application is free, justice, as far as the application is free, just go ahead and apply for it, honestly. Like, you're not going to lose that on anything, okay? Just go ahead and apply. Okay, I've already answered this question, Ruth. Can you just watch the video? I've already answered this question. You guys are my witness. <laughs> I've already answered this question, please. Can you just check the video? Yeah, business schools are expensive. Yeah, yes, they are. Mm-hmm. It's like it's like that everywhere. Okay, so um, yeah, I think I've answered all the questions. I've answered the questions. 
Okay. Um, so like I said, we are going to end the session. So I don't want it to be long for the persons that will be watching after. I hope I've, I've, I hope I've covered everything. Please, if, if you feel I've not answered your question, just try and watch the video. I did, you know, I collected like some of these questions into different topics and I'm very certain your question would have fallen into one of those topics. And I even recommended some videos you could watch. Maybe to give you more insight. Maybe there's something I said in that video that I've forgotten to mention here, you know. Because when I'm making my videos, I'm sharing it based on research and based on experience. So most likely, this possibility that I, I was talking too much. So <laughs> I kind of like went extra mile. <laughs> so just watch the video. Um, how do you find a part-time job? I guess that's that's it. So most in the um honestly for me, I'd not oh, it's took me past 45 minutes. So honestly, for me, I'd not have to work like a part-time job. Yeah, yeah, because I had to focus on my studies and I had a scholarship. So I now to work a part-time job. But for, for my friends that are working part-time, normally in the in the it depends on the city they are working that you, that you are in. Let's take a city like in Paris. Of course, in Paris, there are lots of options, you know, in Paris. So you have like you have bars, you have restaurants, you have like babysitting. So there are different like many options. It's like McDonald's. I know McDonald's, they have like um a kind of student, like the employee student. So you can always check check out on that, you know, to find it out. Like what are the part-time student jobs? Just search on Google. Student jobs in this city, you definitely find options. This I'm just thinking in Paris, for example. In Grenoble, I know they have like the factory jobs, I think they have it here, but let's take Grenoble. They have like the factory jobs that you count in inventories. They have that, and they have like organizations that you know they they are responsible for connecting you with the person that is going to need your services. So I would advise making you arri arrive in your city, just search for the part-time jobs that are available in your city. But it might not be the same in like no cities varies, just like if someone staying in Lagos and someone staying in a smaller city. Oh, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, no problem. Please go ahead. You are free to. So, guys, I hope I answered your questions, and I hope I did not talk too much. This this session was not supposed to last this long, but I'm glad because that means you guys are interested and asking questions. So, I'm happy to. Thanks for thanks for your time. Thanks for showing up. I'm so grateful. Thanks for taking out your time because. Now I have a lot of things to do. I understand the value of your time. Understand the value of time. No, we have a lot of things to do. We have a lot of things. You feel like you have a lot of time, but until you're very busy, you know that time is precious. So, um, uh, how long is post study? This is the last one. Then we end. I promise. This is the last one. Then we end. So, how long is post study? Normally in France, um, for the schools that have done the administrative procedure. They're going to give you a one year visa. I have to mention a mystery procedure because I've heard of stories that there are some schools that they don't have this accreditation to so have like a post study. And students that in, in, went, they ended up finding out that they can't apply for the APS. They call it APS. I don't need to change the name, but it's the one year post study that allows you to look for a job. It's like searching for a job visa kind of thing. So you have like a one year to, that allows you after your master's to look for a job. Mm, yeah. So that's it for that one. All right, guys. Um, thank you for sharing up once again. I'm going to end the session here. And please do subscribe if you're just in my face for the first time. Please do subscribe. Okay, do subscribe. And um, I'm going to see you um, in, in my next video. And if you want some of this live session, just let me know. I'll be organizing them. It actually makes things easier for me anyways. I don't have to edit. I'm so sorry about that, Matthew. I'm so sorry about that. Yeah, I mean engineering like all these imp schools that like yeah i'm sorry <laughs> sorry guys all these engineering schools that like the institutes they're really competitive like for the students in in france like the french students they have to go through a two-year training they call it like class preparatoire like it's like um a competition kind of that they have to prepare before the inside so it's, it's quite competitive so i think from based on their experience right now they're more kind of like, like um really tedious in the selection process like the imp school they're, they're kind of more tedious in it and it could have also depended if you have like it could have also depended on your this thing because i know i know i know someone don't say i tell i told you that she, she had electrical engineering background and then she was able to get into it so it may depend on also your experience are you able to present yourself what skills you offered because some of the questions they ask you be like what's what skill are you bringing to the table um what have you done because like it's going to be a really intensive program and they want to be sure that you're able to take up that in, you know, that intensity or the requirements what you are going to be doing you know to avoid anybody um yeah i just feel maybe because i've been your cover letter maybe you're not you know putting your story very well show how 
your skills relate to it and why you should do it. Because for me, guy, I did industrial chemistry. <laughs> but anyways, I got funding. I, I got scholarship. So that was enough evidence that I'm able to take it on. Yeah. All right, guys. So I'll end it here. Um, feel free to book the one-on-one -on -one session if you need more personalized responses that I can help you with. But for now, we'll stop here. Bye. And thanks for joining. See you next time. Bye.